to the Welcome to the World of Virtual. Um, so good morning. Great to see all of you here today. And I promise that we have packed the next 50 minutes or so with lots of gems. And that's what you're here for. We're going to give you your money's worth. Let me start by introducing my wonderful panel. Uh, these are my partners in crime this morning. Uh, first, let's say hi to Riz from um, Gyro, Den Densu. Give us a hey, wave, Jane. Riz. <laughs> Good to be here. Okay. And then we have um, Janet, who is um, at MediaCorp. She's our go-to superwoman. Um, hello. When we, pull, when we have to pull off our biggest events. Hey, Janet. Hello, hello. And then, of course, I'm so happy to just get a little bit of this gentleman's time. He is the, one of the busiest CEOs in Singapore, none other than Ismail from um, um, Propnex, um, Singapore's largest property agency. And um, he's um, actually, over the past six months, we've learned how he's embraced digital, digital and virtual in such a big way. And I think he's got a lot to share. Okay. And... We have one more guest, but I'm not going to introduce her until the end of the session. And all of you will have to stay because she literally comes bearing gifts for everyone. Okay, so if that's not a hook, I don't know what is. Okay, so now is virtual the new reality? So in order to let us have a better sense of um, this room, um, what I'd like to do now is to call up a short poll. Could, I see, could we have the next slide, please? So all of you will see a poll window pop up very, very quickly. Okay, yes. So could you let us know, um, is your company planning to virtualize an event? Number one, yes, in the next one to six months. Yes, in the next six to 12 months. Yes, but not sure how to go about it. No, it's not relevant to our business. And then I wonder why you're at, why you're at this webinar. And then fifth, we have already organized virtual events. So could we take a few seconds to kind of get a sense of the room? Could all of you kind of click on the, on the poll and let us know. So when the results are ready, the team will flash. Okay, so there's some of you who want to um, create an event in the next one to six months. I think you've come to the right place. Um, those of you who are not sure what to, what to do and how to go about it, perfect place. And those that of you have already organized virtual events, I think we're going to have gems on how you can overcome some of that virtual event saturation that we're seeing. So all in all, that's great. And um, let's get going. I wanted to start really um, with a quote from one of the most famous motivational speakers, Zig Ziglar. Now, what an amazing name. And he once said, difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. This has never been more true than in the past year, where many of us who are marketers had to scramble to innovate and find new ways to engage the market during the pandemic. Now, this was a business critical situation, but I think many of us rose to the, the challenge. Next. The, pan, you know, the pandemic rendered physical events, literally, it was impossible. So we innovated by turning to virtual events. And as you can see, there was a real mushrooming in this space for everything from conferences to seminars and even tours and definitely concerts. Um, I don't know if any of you um, saw the Maroon 5 concert or the JJ Lin concert, for example. Um, really notable highlights. Um, other notable highlights I wanted to share um, include New York Fashion Week. That entire Fashion Week got, got turned into a virtual event, um, as well as Audi launched the A3 virtually. And we at MediaCorp, we actually pivoted and launched the Executive Insights webinar series last year. And I'll be sharing some of our learnings, some of our critical learnings in a little bit. But let's see how the industry is reacting. Well, the industry is reacting fairly well because, you know, from the surveys that were done, 46% of marketers say that they've turned to virtual events to generate pipeline. Um, one of the key reasons why they do it. And of this, 55% believe that they will invest more in these virtual events in the coming year. Um, we're already in 2021 and we do actually don't see the momentum letting up. Now, 
What's very important, and that's why many of you are, are here to, with us today, is that 80% of people join virtual events for an educational purpose. And this edu educational purpose really must form the core of your reason for doing a virtual event, okay? So going forward, we see that there's been a thousand percent growth in this area. Virtual events covering all aspects of businesses from enterprises to universities since the pandemic. And look at that amazing number, $774 billion will be spent um, in by 2030 on virtual events. And that's growing tenfold from 2019. So there is no stopping, there is no stopping this, um, this train, it's left the station. And those of you who are now thinking how you can leverage on this, you're in the right place at the right time. So even Condé Nast did a survey and 90% of the companies that they surveyed will continue to do virtual events um, going forward. Um, as you know, big publisher, lots of clients, um, full coverage of the market. Now, what have we learned? Um, what have I personally learned Learned um, from doing these virtual events? So um, yeah, just, just, um, just click through, please. Yeah. I think there were five key advantages of going virtual. Um, and we did not do this until probably April of last year when we looked at the situation and said, okay, this pandemic is going to last far longer than we expected. And we had better get um, our, our button gear and get onto the virtual bandwagon. So in April last year, we launched Executive Insights. And since then, it's gone from success to success. We've done over 20 different webinars. And um, I'm going to share a stat um, coming up and it will show you why this entire space of going virtual is so seductive. So first of all, we believe we've been able to drive greater audience reach. Um, this is because when we used to do physical events, we would probably do five physical events a year, and then we would probably attract maybe five to 600 people at these events. Now, last year, over 20 webinars, we grew our audience to 6,000, you know, just from going virtual. And we don't think that that number is going to slow down anytime soon. And because of that, we've been, we've seen that there is a very low cost barrier in doing these events. And in fact, your marketing cost comes down. And not only that, it frees you up from the physical logistics. Just imagine those five events that we used to run between the entertainment and the F&B and you know, the location. There was just so much to do. But now having pivoted to this, this method of um, conveying information and educating, we actually find that Things are just a lot easier. We're able to hit the market much faster. And not only that, we're able to gain fast and valuable data of the people who attend, both from their feedback during the events. As you saw, we've, I've already gotten you on a poll and there'll be a few more polls coming up. So everything that you see today at this webinar is what we consider best practice, okay? So, you have fast and valuable data, and that allows you to improve your brand strategy because it also helps you better understand what attendees are looking for and then design new content going forward um, to engage them. Now, as you've, as you've seen, we did not do Executive Insights as a one-off. It's a series. And I think this is something that Ismail will also touch on when we talk about how PropNext has also pivoted. So again, just remember this, 80% of people come for education. Don't do things, don't do things as a one-off, do things as a series. And this will help you reach your brand strategy KPIs. Okay, so at this point, I want to invite um, Riz to share with us from an agency point of view, where the space is going. Riz, over to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to Shen. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Why don't we jump onto the next screen? Look, I, um, when, when I saw those statistics when we first caught up, I was pretty surprised, I have to be honest. I mean, they, they outlined some significant and fast shifts in focus and marketing investment across the board, um, across a lot of industries. Now, 
I don't know why I was surprised because one of the biggest challenges the marketing practice faces, you know, is keeping up with change, whether it's change in audience behavior, whether it's change in the channels we use or change in technology platforms that enables it. Um, but also that's what this diagram on this slide represents. It represents change in marketing over the last 70 years and the fundamental difference in what we must do today versus what we used to do in order to be effective. Um, on the left hand side, where once we were purely focused on, you know, the idea of brand awareness and salience, being big and bold and present. However, time, there's been a fundamental shift in terms of we need to do all that, but through the guises of personalization and customization. And I know there's going to be some great examples of that later in the conversation, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. What I really want to spend some time today focused on is with that notion of speed of change in mind, seeing that 27% of the audience today are planning to run their first event in the next six months. Um, and also as well, seeing that a large thing is about 40% of the audience have already run some events. You know, what are some of the principles you can use so that first event isn't so terrifying that you realize it's just part and parcel of what you already do as a marketer and it's the same, the same way of thinking. Um, but also as well, for those who've already done it, how do you maximize your effectiveness and continue to build and improve? Um, going forward. And that really comes down to the, the three triangles you see on the right hand side there. Um, those three expectations we're really seeing emerge in the market. And if you can tap into them, that will lead to you know, significant success for your brand as you invest in these, these events. So the first, the first trend there is the concept of interaction. People really want to be able to self-serve, manipulate and control the experiences they have with you online. And I know there'll be some great examples of that shortly. The second one is the concept of new economy businesses, startups, apps, all these, these brands that just pop up out of nowhere and slot into our lifestyles beautifully. And the way they do that is by enhancing and surrounding the existing products and services we use. They don't fundamentally change our behavior until we realize they've changed the way society operates. Um, so that's, that's another consideration. And the third fact, which Dasheng, you, you talked on, and I know is something we're going to um, spend a bit of time on at the end of the session, is this concept of learning, of betterment and improving yourself. And that now more than ever, you know, we're, we're continuously seeking out information. So why don't we jump onto the next slide? Because on the topic of information, well, there's, there's more of that out there than ever. Um, what you see on this slide are just a few very large numbers uh, which represent a small subset of everything that happens online in the space of one minute. You know, 3.8 million Google searches, 18.1 million text messages are sent, 41.6 million WhatsApp messages are sent. And then for those of us using Snapchat, 2.1 photos disappear um, every minute. So that, that's quite important for us to consider because not only do we need to be mindful of the points that Dashing made earlier where you know, your direct competitors are increasing their own online event efforts. So that's the first thing you need to be mindful of. The second thing you need to be mindful of is the fact that your audience themselves are drowning in a world where it's just noisier everywhere. So what that really means is capturing their attention, capturing their attention and holding it and providing a fair value exchange is now even more critical. So I guess that leads to the next point of how are you supposed to even identify what matters to them and what channels to use in all of this noise. So if we go to the next slide, for us to identify, I guess, where that value lies, we, I, we need to identify what your audience value. Um, and so what I'm showing you here today are just some statistics that we use internally, just to remind ourselves that as marketers, no matter how well we know our audience, we are not our audience. And sometimes we might be surprised by the difference between us and them. Now this data is old, I'll admit that, but it makes the point perfectly. When we surveyed the general public and when we surveyed marketers and we asked them, which apps and services do you regularly use over a three month period? The results were pretty astounding. You can see the green bars there. That percentage shows the percentage of the general public who used a channel. The pink bar represents the percentage of marketers who did. So with this in mind, we can immediately see we may have some biases or heuristics guiding the way we plan things that aren't actually true to what our audience need. Now, this will change by industry and audience, of course, but it's just a good, let's check ourselves before we proceed to make sure we're focusing in the right direction, to make sure as you build these events and experiences, you bring in the right mediums and elements that'll be relevant. 
which leads us to the next slide, which is a very, very simple summary of a recent piece of research we did, which was focused on trying to understand what matters to your audience as you're trying to architect these ultimate customer experiences. And the reason we wanted to do that was in recognition of the fact that in this day and age, work and life have merged horrifically. Many of us are probably sitting at home right now as opposed to an office. I know I'm not in an office presenting to you. And we wanted to explore this because we recognize, as I'm sure a lot of you, running events is what you might do professionally. Marketing is part of, it's, it's been the career you're building. So to, for those of you in the B2B space, this is incredibly important because you can see it's not just about being a better business. It's also as well being better for the person that you're marketing to. And you simply cannot afford to discount that individual side of, of the person you're talking to. No matter how big their organizational brand they represent or no matter how big and small the opportunity you're trying to pursue with them. So if we look at those four main points, it's, it's really quite simple and they're very grounding. And I'm not gonna do a deep dive on them today because we've got a report we can share. And if you wanna contact us through the chat, we can get that to you. But on the personal side, there are two things. The first one, not surprisingly, and Dasheng led with this, enrichment, learning, make me a better individual, make me look good in my organization. The second one is a word we've framed as preeminence. In doing that, become a brand I would be proud to share or represent with my superiors, with my colleagues, with my team, knowing that you'll support them in the same way I'm supported. So that's, that's addressing the individual. And then obviously when we think about the, 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 the company itself, how do you demonstrate understanding of that company's needs? As you move your events online, how can you create more tailored experiences related to industry, need state, innovation, priority, whatever it might be? Then also as well, the final pillar there, reliability. How do you demonstrate that your brand, that individual, that company can trust to deliver? And maybe that's something you put forward yourself. Maybe that's something you put forward in conjunction with your partners, or maybe it's something you put forward in conjunction with your customers and the broader community coming together. And I'll give an example of that on the next slide where I just very quickly wanted to showcase two, two, two brands or two events, which I believe are useful thought starters for marketers, whichever way they're gonna go in their event journey. And I think the first example I want to use is Apple. Um, Apple often gets regarded for doing a lot of things very well, but one of the things I think they've done particularly well in the last 24 months is transition their annual event, their worldwide developer conference to an online event. Now this is a premium event. It runs every year in California. It's never been accessible to all members of Apple's developer community. In fact, earlier in my career, I remember, you know, kind of it was something I would have loved to attend, but it just wasn't a feasible, viable option. In moving the event online, they not only adapted to the challenges of COVID and movement restrictions, they made the event free and they opened it to the public. And that changed a lot for Apple. Apple has one of the strongest developer advocacy communities in the world. And by bringing the public and that community together, it suddenly created so much social proof around the strength of their brand and what they're going to do. So spend some time, jump online. You can go through it all free. The production quality, fantastic. The volume of content, overwhelming. But one of the things that stood out the most to me is it's a subtle change, but it's had a huge impact, especially for anybody who's seen Apple's latest campaigns to the mass media right now. Apple is now able to talk about topics that they used to only talk about to developers to the public. And the topic they're really leading with right now is the concept of privacy and the authority they have because they've blended those two communities that wouldn't normally come together is, is second to none. So that's the first event. That's the first example. You know, How can you rethink your own events that you currently do and how might that open up the audiences you reach and then the way and the topics you talk to them? And then the second example I'm going to give I'm sure many of us are familiar with, you know, the innovative event that is Singapore FinTech Festival, which happens every year, as well as Switch, which also happens annually. So third party events, because, you know, that's what that, this is to, to most of our marketers, um, marketers on the call. The, the idea of being able to sponsor and partner in something that's already existing. This, this collaboration, SFF and Switch, it was, it was one of the, the first and best examples I saw of not just two events coming together, but then going global. This event happens in different guises around the world, but for the first time it happened with a truly global narrative and interaction. So that meant for the marketers that were interested in getting involved, they all of a sudden had the ability to take their brand to markets and audiences that simply would have, wouldn't have been practical before. So again, this is a, a really important experience 
because not only do you increase your audience by a significant multiple, or gain that exposure in new markets, which might have been harder to penetrate or, or form a beachhead on. But most importantly, and I mean, this is the thing we're always looking for as marketers, take advantage of specialist infrastructure that's already put in place. And as the team take you through some of their examples and case studies of what they've built in the past, that will become very apparent that if you can find, a, if you can find an event or something that exists to become a part of, that could become a serious source of competitive advantage. Because one of the biggest challenges as a marketer is where do I focus my value? Is it on knowing the tactic, doing the tactic very well, knowing my audience or knowing my product? And so this is one of those opportunities we can make that decision and really focus your investment and your effort for maximum return. So there is a lot to go through, but I'm gonna wrap up on the next slide. Um, and this is the fun one. This is the one where I have to tell you what's gonna happen in the future. Um, now, I don't know for sure, but there are some indicators that are incredibly clear. Uh, when we look within the event and the virtual event space itself, there are a large number of reports showing us that moving online has not just been massively effective, um, increased, increased efficiencies for marketers, but it's massively diversified who is able to represent in those events. And that is something that has been felt by the audiences. They are responding saying they are seeing much more diverse representation of companies, brands, and topics in the events they're attending. And that is, at a human level, brilliant, but also when we look, know that a lot of businesses have DNI at the top of their agenda, internally and externally, it's great to see brands walking the walk as well as putting out the saying something that's valuable. So have that in mind. How can this help you achieve those goals and how can this help you create better events that are better representative? The, sec the second thing I think that's gonna be increasingly important in terms of moving fast is maximizing the value of your partnerships. Bring in your core partners to your events. Of course, that makes sense. Bring in your customers. Again, that makes sense. Then bring in those on the periphery of your industry or perhaps on the periphery of your ecosystem. And there'll be another example of this because they can add on that, that idea of adding value. They can add more value, which just makes the event a more immersive and holistic experience for the attendees. And then I guess the final thing to think about is smart spin-offs. COVID was a catalyst for change. It was a hand that was dealt to us that we had no control over. We changed. We have succeeded in many situations and we've proven that we can. I think virtual events, Dasheng's been polling us already today. We're gonna to have some more polls through the session they provide you with so much real-time data that you can act on. Use that to decide, what am I gonna do next? What's the next event we're gonna build? What's the next engagement? What's the next audience? So I think those three things, d &I, it's got to be something that you champion and virtual events can help you do that. Partnerships, think about them a bit differently, but then also as well, remember how fast you've been running and what you've achieved in the last 24 months and now continue to do that, but this time in control with the data that you get from the events. Thanks, Thank to you. Shane. Back to you. Yeah. Thanks, Reese. I mean, those are such salient points. And, you know, unfortunately, as a marketer, you know, as things get easier, things also get more difficult. And, you know, and it just sort of swings the pendulum, swings back and forth. Um, when you talked about partnerships and all that, I'm very happy you brought that up because um, even for us, when we created Executive Insights, you know, we created it not as a marketing vehicle, but as a thought leadership and as an industry sharing platform. And which is why we have been able to invite um, people like yourself, people like Ismail across multiple industries, you know, over the past 12 months to come and share with us. And we take a very agnostic view of what we're sharing. So you will also see, you know, Facebook, coming and, and sharing, uh, Google coming and sharing. Although, you know, ostensibly you would think that we, we were all in competition with each other, you know, in this, in this business. But I think that's where the audience then appreciates how much they're learning and how quickly they can learn over a very wide um, a breadth of um, information. So at this point, I, all of you have been listening for a while. I want to call up a poll because I hope that this poll will help me illustrate our next point. So could all of you take a few minutes to answer how many virtual events have you attended in the past year? Between one to five, six to 10, more than 10, and you did not attend any virtual events. 
Okay, um, someone someone responded in the chat every week. Yes, so please, please put down more than 10 virtual events and feel free to put comments um, in the chat. Um, go to the Q&A um, Q portion and start putting in your questions, okay? We want to see some action there. We've got, you know, great, great experts that, that are going, that's going to be able to take, take it out, take out some of the mystery. Now, that's exactly what we expected to see that many of you would have attended more than 10 virtual events in the past year. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that, you know, we are coming to a point where there will be saturation. So part of Reese's point was, okay, how are you going to use different platforms to cut through and get your audience in? That's one. But then what are you gonna do with each of these events in order to keep your audience sticky or coming back for more? So at this juncture, I want to invite Janet. Now, Janet has had, had an interesting year because she was our go-to person for all our huge MediaCorp physical events. But she's had the challenge of her life in the past year to turn some of these mega physical events into really successful virtual events. And she's going to kind of give us the tips and tricks and, and how we should think about it. She's going to talk to you as if you are a client and you have just called her and said, Janet, I want to do a, um, a virtual event. How do I go about it? Okay, so Janet, over to you. Hi, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Janet, um, as introduced by Ta Sheng. I actually spent half of my life as at today, organizing events actually, um, from small giveaway activation to concert held at um, indoor stadium. I've always believed that as an organizer, right, we need to evolve to stay connected with our audience. And moving from on ground to virtual is a necessary transformation to connect. But what is a good virtual event? Um, in general, a good virtual event is about one, having good content and speakers. Two, good technical support with proper audio, lightings and, and, and visual. Three, good and stable broadband services for uninterrupted streaming. And four, it should cost less and require a shorter timeline. However, to be good, right? Um, I would still believe that we still need to set a realistic timeline, no matter how many times have you been doing the same kind of execution before. But to us, good is not enough. We need our events to work harder. In a way, our events should be able to, one, engage our audience to create interest and interaction so as to increase number two lead generate a conversion via networking tools and number three it should also provide analytics that we can actually use to de derive comprehensive insights about our audience behaviors it is very important to achieve these three things to consider ourselves or consider the event a successful one okay um 20 2021 started with excitement for me. The Hitachi Social Innovation Forum gave us an opportunity to, in, to, to create the first ever fully virtual event in Southeast Asia. We had to bring on-ground experience to online with same thing with booths and conferences. Number two, we need to create a virtual environment that support multi-touch point, multimedia, and also with the networking capabilities. Three, we need to track every single movement made by the participant who participated on that day to give comprehensive insight at the end of the event. So in 10 weeks, we only have 10 weeks to work with. We created the virtual lobby, the exhibition halls and the conference halls, five versions of um, booth design with different configurations. And what we did was we actually produced 20 webinars with 32 local and overseas speakers. We hosted 31 virtual booths that actually carried over 200 videos and documents. This virtual event was given a four-star rating by 200 over respondents based on their on online experience. And it actually generated close to 2,000 leads for our clients. Having said that, you know, we have already moved on after six months. We have already evolved. We will be producing events that are more immersive, okay, more engaging, and 
with rich graphics that we will be designing and work with our partners to impress our clients. Number four, we will also be integrating augmented experience with our new digital setting. If you look at the video that is showing now, you will see the augmented experience that you will, you will experience. Right. Okay. Right. Um, to me, organizing an event is like going on a holiday. That is always what I thought of. Okay. We need to know where we are going, what is the main objective that we are going. Then we will prepare ourselves so that we can enjoy our journey. It is only when we enjoy doing it, then we can have nice photo and memories to be shared. So these are my five keys that help me make great events. First, we have to set goal. We have to identify one primary objective and set smart goals that are specific, measurable, achievable and realistic over a set timeline. It is important to know that there is only one single objective so that a suitable strategy can be developed. Two, readiness. We have to over prepare ourselves to tackle the what ifs. And the beauty of doing a virtual event is everything can be pre prepared. Thirdly, entertain. Entertain not by song and dance in a virtual world, but with one creative design so that audience will love us at first sight. Okay, provide relevant content, but keep it simple and sweet. The Singapore Property Show was a very good example. It, its content's relevance kept the audience engaged for an average of 98 minutes while online. And lastly, we need to empower our audience to control the virtual environment that we have built, to the, built for them. Fourth, the fourth key that I'm going to, to share is to understand our audience. It's very important for us to know what are their expectations, when, where and how they consume our content. And all this information will actually help us determine the best tools to get to them. Last but not least, is time. Um, from the poll that we saw, many of us would have accumulated experiences in running virtual events. No matter how many events we have ran for the past year, we will need to set realistic timeline simply because expectations and influencing factors may not be the same. So in conclusion, these are my five personal keys to create, you know, great experience for yourself, for your audience, for our stakeholder, and also to come up with a great events that everybody will enjoy at the end of the day, throughout the journey by creating or organizing it. Yeah, Janet, actually, um, what, you've sh what you've shared already shows, I mean, in just in the last six or eight months, we've already seen new forms come on and new things being tried. Um, I, re I mean, I personally am very proud that we, that we worked on the Hitachi example. It was a beautiful ex execution. So that, you know, that example, had a very, very immersive environment. And then, you know, but, you know, I don't, you know, very often for executive insights, we get the whole gamut of companies. We get the multinationals uh, attending. We also get SMEs. And I, you know, what I want to encourage is, yes, I think it's good to have ambition, but I don't want any of you to look at it and say, well, I don't have the money, therefore I can't do it. And I think our, our next guest is going to illustrate that you know, not that Propnex has no money, but the, the fact is, you know, they've been able to put things together in a scrappy, in a scrappy, but fast and very engaging way. So one, one word I want to put out there, which qualifies as a virtual experience, is a live stream. And we know in the past year, how many of you have bought fish on a live stream or bought, you know, merchandise on a live stream? There's been a question as to, you know, what, how can you use a virt how can you use virtual experiences to drive sales or merchandise? Live streams are incredible. Last week, I was actually on a Facebook live live stream with a crystal dealer in Guangzhou buying crystals that will be then shipped to me from Guangzhou and all this was happening live. So even that qualifies as, as a virtual experience, right? Because I, you know, I'm not gonna visit Guangzhou anytime soon. So, but at this juncture, I'm going, you know, I'm, I want to bring on, you know, what a partner of ours who's really taken 
digital and virtual by storm, you know, and that's none other than Ismail from Propnex. You know, the property sector was clearly in a little bit of a bind last year. Although Ismail, property is going strong, right? It's still going strong, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, and, you know, I thought that Ismail's company's entire transformation was a really fascinating one. And I wanted him to come join us to tell us more because he has so many tips and tricks up his, okay, very short sleeves today. So, so Ismail, over to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Darshan, and to all the listeners, really, really greatly appreciate that. Because one of the key things I always say here is this, the CMOs and all the marketers out there, you are the people who make CEOs like me look good, honest truth. Okay, because a huge amount of work is done by the marketing department. And I will certainly attest to that, that the marketing department is hugely responsible for the company's growth. And in fact, the marketing department is indeed the catalyst for the rest of the department to work harder. You know, I used to say this, when the marketing department goes into a light sleep, I'm not even saying a deep sleep, you can hear the other departments starting to snore. Yeah, because, you know, the activities are all created and you have to pull everybody towards a direction of getting things done. And that's why uh, Dashan knows this. I'm not, not so sure in MediaCorp, in Dashan's department, I believe you are doing this. Uh, and I have a suggestion. If you want to employ anyone in the marketing department, one of the things that you need to do a test here is this. Ask them to do a test to blow how big is their lungs. <laughs> because we are always breathless. Marketing departments run at a pace that they are always breathless. But having said that, I want to say here is this, Propnex as a company have been always been reaching out to the consumers hugely. But we were more towards the traditional method. Believe me, because we are talking about properties that cost a million dollars. In fact, we had an issue about a mindset. How can consumers go out there and buy properties that worth a million or $2 million virtually when they want to feel and touch? The entire thing changed exactly when the circuit breaker took place. Immediately the day itself, the circuit breaker was announced. We were in a panic mode because it wasn't an instruction that everybody will have to stay at home. Quickly, within 48 hours, we came out with a completely a training webinars for our 9,000 over salespeople. So all our focus was all about conducting webinar trainings continuously every singular day. And I tell you, it really created a huge impact. I mean, if you look at these slides, this was every singular day there was training. And what we focus here is to change the perspective of our salespeople. And we are talking about power sales boosters. And we had got more than 3,000 salespeople attending almost every singular seminars. And that's really, really very huge. Because one of the biggest challenge of doing it logistic here is this. If you want to get the 3,000 agents physically to come and attend, you need an auditorium and in Singapore, you can't do that even many places. And this was very successfully achieved within that two weeks. And then what we did was, hey, having trained our salespeople, what we wanted was a consumer outreach. And I just want to say, I was very happy that even some of our webinars that we conduct for consumers have reached more than 4,000 viewers, consumers attending. And that's definitely a huge value add to us. And as exactly Darshan said, initially when we started, we were a bit, yeah, scrappy, I must say. I mean, yeah, just we, start, yeah. right? Just, just, I'll just start, right? You just have to start. But having said that, we were not so concerned. I mean, I didn't, because every one of us are learning, if you look at this particular slide, and during that circuit breaker for five Saturdays, continuously, I conducted a topic on leadership, just purely, nothing to do with real estate. Yeah, but and then we got a lot more viewers wanting to know because people had an, a change and they had a the little bit of a time and people are now more attuned to listening to get information. And that's the way it moved on and as we conducted. And then we realized, hey, 
That's the way we need to transform. We can't continue to run the business the traditional way. And that we started many series. We talk, we discuss, we tech, we recce. But all we have got to do here is this in the forefront with one simple objective. Bring your content, bring your message out. No point you having everything you want to have in the perfect solution, but you are not reaching out. And every different topic touch on different focus point. A we recce is really, you know, the paradigm she was, what we, we meant by just an example of a we recce dashun. Here is people want to know about a property launch, but we say we go on recce around the two kilometers and we just have a chit chat to talk about what is the best food you can get, what is a good school out there. And people say, wow, therefore, if this project within the radius, these are the so many. So we try to entice people through different way, but at the end of the ultimate objective, more knowledge about a particular product. That happened, the big bang. Yeah, all it happened was when Dashin visited my office in the month of August. Again, we ran breathless. We had in a partnership with MediaCorp and we started the first inaugural Singapore property show together with MediaCorp. Yeah, and it was also, it was really because I was just so inspired really by what was already happening and Ismail and his team. And don't, and I don't want all of you to think that it was a huge team because it wasn't. You know, it was, it was quite a small tight team creating all this content and there was such a wealth of it and leveraging on what I had you know, spoken about earlier, which was that consumers really want the education and looking at everything that Ismail's team put together, we knew that we had an opportunity here. And this is what um, something that Reese had, had talked about earlier, you know, leverage your partnerships. You don't have to go it alone. You know, sometimes it's better to go on a journey with a great partner and you know, it's actually, and this whole partnership has really blossomed in, in ways that were beyond our imagination last year. So it's not back to you. Thank you so much. And then we conducted these uh, webinars and we're talking about 43 virtual webinars during that four weekends. And actually we are very thankful for these results and the outcome. What we did that was, it was more than a million outreach. We never even had the slightest in our mind that how powerful such webinars can have an outreach. What we did was every stakeholders benefited. I mean, as in a real estate company, the one of the key people are developers. Developers were crying because of the circuit breaker. And even after the circuit breaker, some of the restrictions, the economy was not doing well. People were very concerned. What consumers needed was confidence, needed knowledge. How how do we bring that about? And that's what this whole Singapore property show was all about. Because of its success, we did not stop there. So we continued to carry on many other trainings and consumer engagement. And in fact, last year, December, we created something interesting, a campaign on the 12th, 12th December known as Prop Next Friends, because every webinar participants, we wanted them to be part of our community. And then we had a second show, Singapore Property Show this year in 2021. And it was much bolder, bigger, and obviously the outreach exceeded far beyond the 1 million. And, yes, it was and, um, and Ismail, and actually on, on that one, I want to say, the great thing is we did the first one and that was literally three weeks. We put it together, right? Yeah. This one, we had a little bit more runway, but we took everything that we learned in the first one that didn't work. We, we streamlined it. In fact, the show this year was slightly smaller, right? It wasn't a month. It was only two weekends, but our engagement rates were double. So that's what I'm saying. Don't be afraid to try something, then chop and change, chop and change. But our partnership with Ismail and the other um, partners within the property sector, we, we want this to continue because like I said earlier, don't do things as a one-off because once you've invested in that one-off and you don't repeat it, you don't leverage off um, the investment that you've already made. Right, back to you Ismail. Yeah, you're totally right Dashan. And I think we were really, really very thankful because uh, in fact, I remembered uh, there were some panic moments when we did our first Singapore property show because we did not even go to a studio. We had it in our own office in my boss. That's right. Yep. Yep. 
yeah, we were just gung ho enough to say, let's get things done. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we learned through the process and that's how we improved. Uh, but one of the key things here is this, um, what we identified with these thousands and thousands of people who have came to all our webinars here is this, viewership is definitely a topic dependent. I mean, people don't like any hard sell about a product. People want to know, want to experience what is the value proposition? And therefore we created topics that are not even re related to a product, but about real estate market in generic, or for that matter, even feng shui, or even about home deco. But at the end of the day, bringing them together to understand the real estate market. And obviously, uh, we look at it, the virtual experiences was definitely so much more huge in terms of the interactions. I mean, one of the biggest limitations that I had before going virtual was we were conducting consumer seminars week after week, but at most I have got two to 300 and I've got a huge amount of logistic and not forgetting, I have to provide the light refreshments as well. So the cost was much more and yet the audience was only one tenth of what we are able to achieve now. And obviously it created a very strong brand awareness. And so one of the things I want to say here is this, the purchasing cycles demand, we took a different approach. We don't expect people who come and attend our webinar tomorrow to call and want to buy a house. It doesn't work that way. But what it took was people who came and understood Believe me, there were a huge number of people became a fan of ours or follow us through and want to understand a bit more. And then there are these small little offline engagement uh, to, with our salespeople. And eventually many of the leads were transacted to be a successful clients. And that's really huge. One of the key things that I want to say here is this. With all this experience, today we have decided not to stop creating a reach out. And what we did was when the phase two heightened alert was announced. And that was exactly after the last weekend that we finished our Singapore property. So blessed as we were. Immediately we transformed into the entire month of the phase two heightened alert as a prop next digital month. Yeah. Uh, we just came out with the word and then the concept. And then again, what we were doing is almost every singular day, we come out with topics, seminars, and topics that has got to do not related with property again on health and what, working with all our partners, working with our developers, working with all other people who can value add and just bring it out in the forefront. And it was again, a very, very successful month that we had. All of these translated to one thing that I would like to say, and I really want to emphasize Darshan that what you rightly pointed out here is this. Throughout last year until now, what we did was, and one of the greatest advantage we have when we go virtual, all can be recorded. Yeah. And they are huge value. And what we did is, I mean, I mean if you look at it, we created a PropNex TV. And even you see all those, the leadership talk that I talked was something that I did one over years ago during the circuit breaker. We edited it and there are huge amount of nuggets of values in it. And we created a TV and any one of you can be can go in and just hear. Yeah. I mean, that is the value of going virtual. And one thing here is this, I'm not trying, I'm not going to take too much of a commercial, but having said that, Darshan, today coincidentally happened to be the last day of anyone who are listening to become a Propnex friend. And this Sunday, we are going to give out a brand new condo. Why oh. did that here is this? Simply is because. Through the webinars, a lot of people come. We want to create a community of PropNex friends. And we reach out to them in a huge way. And therefore, why is it all about future proofing our business? Right. And driving, and driving more consistent engagement yeah. with your audience. Yeah. So when we talk about future proofing, it is not a one-off event. But don't need to fear. Believe me, if I say my marketing department is only about 10-man team, not in a huge department, yep. but the amount of output that we do here is continuously emphasizing on digital transformation as one of the key pillars. Because why it is? Because now we see a paradigm shift in the behavioral aspect of consumers. Today, I dare say we have sold properties worth 30, 
five million dollars just virtually without having a physical touch of the property. Wow. An overseas client. And we have done not one, not 10, not 100. Hundreds of transactions virtually Propnex have concluded just by getting that right messaging, the content, the information, and as well as we also do virtual tours of properties. So these are all hugely possible. So one of the key things as what Rice has mentioned and Janet and all the people, including Dashan, is all about collaborating and bringing that content to an, an, a greater outreach. And with that, we have done well, I must say in 20 years of Propnex existence, last year was our best performance. Record. Despite COVID, right? Despite yep. COVID, yeah. COVID. And for these six months, we have exceptionally done well. And I'm very certain this is going to be a new record. And all these thanks to embracing technology. And I'll pass oh. it on to you, Dashan. Yes. Oh. Um, the, okay, I hope all of you are very inspired. Every time I speak to Ismail, I, I always come out say, saying that the sky, the sky is only so high, right? And it's possible to reach. So at this, at this point, what I want to do is um, kind of wrap it up and saying going forward. So what am I, what as a marketing professional am I recommending to you and what have we seen from what Reese has shared, from what Ismail and Janet have shared. Now, I want you to seriously consider virtual or hybrid virtual events to expand your coverage. Going forward, even if you do a physical event, Definitely include a virtual aspect of it, broadcast it, live stream it, do something with it on a virtual platform because your audience will grow. Second, we've said this several times now, don't do a one-off. I think it's okay to do an experiment as a one-off, but really consider about creating a sustained stream of events because you will reap the rewards of your investment. In fact, when we started Executive insights there was so much work that went into creating each of these webinars but now you know honestly we do a, we do you know between two or three webinars a month and the team is whipping it out right because you develop a rhythm so i encourage that so now for smaller companies a stream of events could be a series of live streams we're working with some of our smes who are selling product to create live streams off our radio platforms and we don't do them as a one-off, we do them as a series, right? So, and that seems to work very well because you need some time to build your audience. So that's highly recommended. Now, I don't think we need to talk much about this. Ensure educational content is high. No one is going to come to listen to you toot your horn and go away and learn nothing. Now that's a waste of their time and that's criminal. So we don't do this. Okay, so now visual, and uh, sound quality, tremendously important. As everyone knows this morning, we already did our sound checks to make sure that you can hear us. Audio is smooth. Now that is critical. So that is not even something you think of last, think of that first. How's your bandwidth? Are you going to be able to um, transmit smoothly? I know when we did the first property show, we had so, we had technical issues and we were all like pulling our hair out but we've learned and it's things have become so much smoother. I mean, I'm so excited for, for Ismail and Janet going forward when 5G becomes so pervasive on our island and what that would unlock in terms of virtual events. Now, lastly, actively collect data. So you've seen that today we've been doing polls. Um, we're going to have another poll coming up as well. You know, we do pre, post, surveys, et cetera. We also put these videos out on our, on our website and we also track the number of views, long tail. These, this is all the beautiful things that you can do and you know who's watching and you know who you can then out, reach out to for comments and additional feedback. That's so critical. So use all of this to sharpen your game. Now I want to go to a slide. Okay, all of you don't leave because after this poll, I'm going to introduce a guest who comes bearing gifts. Okay, so stay with me. So this poll, the question is, has this webinar inspired you to experiment and to turn maybe one of your physical events into an amazing digital experience? Could we have your response, please?
Okay, let's see. Reese, Ismail, Janet, this is our report card. <laughs> Nervous. Nervous, yeah. Nervous. <laughs> okay, what's the result? <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Okay, we've made we've made the points we needed to make. We're gonna give ourselves a pat on the back. High five, Isma. High five, Reese. So, um, thank. Okay, thank you so much for the response. Really made our day. But what's really gonna make my day is to introduce our last. Um, oh gosh, we have. Okay, let's do a short question and answer. I forgot that. Um, okay, a couple. And I'm just going to call up and. Um, we're kind of running a very tight on time. So I tell you what, we're running tight on time. So we're going to post the recording of this plus answers to these questions on our website. You will all receive the link after this. I just don't want to eat away time from our, our next guest. Um, at this point in time, can I introduce our last guest, Celeste from the Singapore Institute of Retail Studies? Who will, who will share with us the gifts that she comes bearing. These are resources that will be important for all of you and that all of you can leverage off. Celeste, over to you. Thank you, Darshan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me this morning. Actually, I agree with you totally, Darshan. I'm also completely inspired by what Ismail has shared with us this morning to hear about the transformation journey uh, PropNex has gone to because this actually mirrors what we've observed ourselves here at SIRS on our learner's journey, right? Um, and I hope that the courses I'm about to share with you today will bring you some ideas on how to go on about your online success. Very quickly, here at SIRS, our mission is to help transform uh, the, tr the retail industry, we are a CET center, which means most of our learners are adult learners. And we are a CET center under Nanyang Polytechnic, right? Next slide, please. Okay. Our strategic partners, um, I, I, I think talking about gifts, um, just know that uh, SIRS was actually a CET that was first set up by WDA back in 2006. Now, uh, WDA has since split into Skills Future Singapore as well as Workforce Singapore. So in what we do, we do a lot of, uh, we do a lot of trainings to help companies leverage on grants to implement solutions. So along with ESG as well as IMDA, we bring solutions that can really help um, SMEs in, in this case. I think there's a lot of questions on SMEs. So the grants that we work with these agencies will actually be really useful for SME to tap onto as well. Um, we have tech partners that we work with to bring courses that will be useful. Um, to our retailers. And then there's also the TECs and the multipliers, the trade associations we work with to conduct further outreach, right? Next slide, please. Okay, so just a little bit of a report card. So here at SIRS, through WSQ and non-WSQ tr uh, training, we've actually trained over 200 of a thousand trainers over the, over the time we've been around. I also want to just point out very quickly, which we've been talking about pandemic for a bit here now. So over last year, for the COVID hit pandemic uh, sectors, we've actually conducted training to over 6,000 over trainees to basically help them cope with the COVID, uh, the, the COVID uh, situation. Um, that's something we're really proud of because tech adoption was so important during that period of time and we were able to really train quite a number of uh, uh, persons to come about. Uh, and next slide, please. Okay, so back to the topic for this event uh, this morning. The topic here, I'd like to share with you two courses that will really help you achieve some traction towards planning your own online event to market, host, and these, execute. And these are the gifts, right? And these are the yes. gifts, right, the last, yeah. Yes, exactly. Thank you for listening to my goal. I have to do that very quickly. Um, so yes, in terms of the, of the courses that we have, the first I'd like to share with you is Lever Up Customer Engagement with Live Streaming. And Dashan has been talking about it a little bit here. And so to us, live streaming is really, as he mentioned, not about... It's really not about selling. It's about connecting with, with your clients online. It is relatively inexpensive, accessible, easy to set up. You do need to plan though. So next slide, please. Okay. In order to have a successful event, our two-day workshop will talk you through on how to plan and create content. It is actually very important to script together your program flow before you go into it because while a good event is useful, a badly 
put together event is actually detrimental to your brand. We will talk about what kind of a technical support you will need a little, but just to point out, this workshop is really targeted at your at your for anyone. So we won't be going into big tactic, uh, technical details about big equipment and all. On this workshop, we'll be talking about using your your handphone to be able to put together a decent streaming event, right? Who should attend? Now we'll talk about marketeers and uh, communicators, but really for this particular workshop, we would say that frontline staff who has to engage with customers online, this is a very suitable uh, uh, module for you to go through because it talks to you about how to engage with customers online. You know, live streaming has been used for so many things, including apologizing to your customers when you, you have a wrong step just very recently. Uh, the the seafood uh, seafood house owner has actually done something similar to that. So the next course run is on the twenty first of July, and this is the gifts part, right? Okay, you note know that actually uh, in terms of full course fees, this two days course is about eight hundred over dollars. But together with subsidies from SSG, we're talking about seventy percent funding for Singapore and Singaporean PRs. And for SMEs, there is also a scheme called the Enhanced Training Support for SME which means if you are sent for training by SME, you'll be looking at and joining support of up to 90%, and, that, and hence the two-day workshop works out to only $90.75. Now, also, this course is SFEC eligible. I'll share a little bit more about what SFEC is later. Okay, next slide. Now, so you produce an event, you need to bring uh, audience in, as Ismail shared earlier. That's a very key point, right? So this second module that I'm talking about is actually a module by our School of Business Management from Nanyang Polytechnic. The School of Business Management actually has a specialization in MICE and events management. And so this course will be tapping onto the expertise of that school to deliver, right? In this one day event, we'll be talking about how the online world differs from the offline world slightly and what that means for your marketing. So we'll talk about creating a social media content uh, for your event uh, on social media and also how you should develop an event branding campaign. Back to the idea of a series, a series is really important. Why? And why then you need to invest in branding? It's to actually ensure that your series will continuously run. So really, really very much in line with what Dashan has shared earlier. And who should attend? Again, it would be your marketeers, but we'll say that these two courses actually work hand in hand together. You use one to produce your event, to plan your event, to think about how you're going to execute your event through live streaming. You do this second course so as to be able to bring audience to your event, right? So um, the next course run for this is on the 16th of July. Um, details here, please scan the QR code if you're interested to find out more. Again, subsidies for SME and for mid-career transition uh, uh, personnel are, are as you see on the screen. Um, and again, we will talk about the special subsidies that we, we, we have from Skills Future. So next slide, please. Okay, Skills Future. Okay. These are some of the schemes that Skills Future has for enterprises specifically. First of all, I've mentioned SFEC. So SFEC is actually a part of $10,000 worth of credits to cover up to 90% out of pocket expenses for your, uh, for your cost fees. So you will remember earlier, I mentioned cost fees on a one-day basis is $90, right? If your company has SFEC, it means that that $90, which was not originally supposed to be uh, paid in cash, you can use your SFEC credits to pay for it. What does this mean? For the one-day cost, $90 upfront cash you're supposed to pay, right? With SFEC, you offset $81 of that. So what does the company end up paying to send a staff for live streaming course to learn how to plan an event? $9. So that's, I think, the gift that Dashan was looking for. And it's actually brought to you by SkillsFuture Singapore. Um, also, yeah. we <laughs> on the SkillsFuture series, that is a series of curated uh, courses that uh, S uh, SSG has put together. And these are short one-day courses that usually talks to you about technological transformation and trends. For example, the social media marketing course I shared earlier is a SkillsFuture series course. Um, SFDW is a very specialized course. If you know you need to transform and you know your company needs to tap onto digital, but you're really, really totally unsure of how to go about it, the Skills Future Digital Workplace is a course you should consider because it gives you ideas on what you need to be doing. Um, as for the Enhanced Training Support Scheme for SME, I actually just touched on that. 
shortly, just a short while ago, um, when I mentioned that there is a difference in tier of pricing uh, between your Singaporeans, normal Singaporeans and companies sending in uh, and SME sending in uh, your trainees for training. Uh, the skills framework is a very useful framework developed by SSG. You, enterprises can utilize the skills framework to provide to, to, with key information on existing and emerging skills in each, each sector. And with the skills framework, your enterprise can better chart career pathways and identify suitable training programs to make informed decisions on skills investment. And finally, last but not least, this is a relatively new initiative by Skills Future Singapore. Uh, the Skills Future Queen Bee program, we've heard, for example, Shopee has embarked on such a program. So this particular program, uh, we also welcome, uh, SSG also welcome people to join the SFQB network. And by so doing, you will receive support from a skills manager and benefit from curated training programs. Yep. Okay, so if you have any further questions about <laughs> that was that was like a bullet train select. But, I'm sorry, Dashin. But yeah, I'm, no, it's okay. But yeah, I'm, I, it's a yeah, bullet I'm... train, but clearly it's because <laughs> there really are there really is quite a bit of money out there that all of you and resources that all of you can leverage on to kind of meet the challenges that are ahead of us. You know, yep. so use use these resources to to do your catch up or to you or to do your leapfrog ahead. Okay, so Celeste, um, we get everyone to, to scan this and to go to enterpriseengagessg.gov.sg, right? But, um, yep. and, yeah, and I want to bring this session to a close. We've actually gone on for quite a, quite a bit of time. Um, and, but could I, maybe could we have some closing remarks? Um, um, Reese, could, um, could I have a closing remark from you? Any last bit of wisdom you'd like to share? I think what's been great about today's session is, and some of the questions that we're seeing coming through is how each of the topics from the foundational thinking through to the practicalities with the Propnext team of, let's just get out there and learn, um, to then being able to look at some best practice examples. I think it's have an idea of what you want to do, but don't be scared to try it. I mean, Ishmael, you were saying marketers, you know, go as hard and run as fast as you can, make your CEOs look like champions, right? I think that's that's all the encouragement the audience needs. Thank you, Rhys. Janet? I guess for, for an event organizer or when you're organizing an event, right, it's very important for you to enjoy the journey, okay? Through learning, you know, what is your target audience and all. You know, always enjoy your journey so that, you know, you can create something that people will enjoy as well because only when you like it, you will produce something that everybody That's true. That, it's yeah. contagious, right? It's contagious. Right. And, um, on to Mr. Mr. Enthusiasm Contagious himself, Ismail. <laughs> Thanks, Dashan. I mean, first and foremost, the hundred of you still uh, holding on here and listening. Thank you so much. I truly, very humbly appreciate and thank all marketers because I truly believe marketers are the backbone of the company. And all I want to say here is this, don't fear. And we don't have a choice. It's not a choice that we can take time, six months, 12 months to think about to start. In fact, we don't have a choice. We should have actually done earlier, but it's perfectly okay. Just jump on the bandwagon and join all of us to make a huge difference in terms of connecting and outreach. Obviously, I look forward to many of you being our Propnext friend as today is the last <laughs> day. Yep, thank, thank you. Propnext.com, yep. Wow. So um, thank you everybody for attending. I hope that I lived up to my promise, which was to really give you more than 15 minutes worth of gems and inspiration. So at this point, I want to say MediaCorp, we're always here. So please tap on us. Please call us if you need advice. Um, you know, don't just tap on us because you want to buy ads. Uh, it's not necessary. We have I mean, a lot of information. We're able to help. And honestly, your success will become our success. So on that note, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, and I'll see all of you, all of you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, panel. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.